Hampshire College Professor of Humanities, Robert Maher, has long been an ardent supporter of the anti-war movement, but he firmly believes that opposing war doesn't mean you can't support the warriors. In fact, he's dedicated much of his career to fostering greater public knowledge and understanding of the sacrifices made by our men and women in uniform. The professor came in and spoke with me recently about his concern for America's military veterans. I grew up uh, during, this, during the Second World War. Um, after the Second World War, when our uh, veterans were coming back from the Second World War, I had a, a, a very um, particular experience, one that um, there was one particular young soldier who had been, um, I think, 18 or 19 in the last push after the Battle of the Bulge, the last months of the war. He was a commando. And um, I didn't know any of this till, because, till a particular day when my friends and myself, who had idolized him, uh, were in his front lawn. Um, we were playing war. You know, hiding behind trees, hiding in doorways, well, uh, right in the different. middle of the city. Uh, and he came out and he sat us down. And this is someone whom I, who used to, I used to ride on his shoulders. I mean, he used to play with us. He came out and he was fiercely angry. And he called us all over, sat us around him in the grass, and said, let me tell you about war. And he began describing his own experience as a commando at night, um, stalking onto bridges and taking boys even younger than himself, because in the German army at that time they were virtually children serving uh, in the last defense of the Reich. Um, and he would, he would hold them in his arms, one hand over their mouth, another sticking his knife into, into, their, into their backs and twisting it. And, so, and he said, I felt so many young boys trembling to death in my arms. And as he began to tell his stories, he began to, to, to shake and quiver and actually weep. And his wife came out realizing what was happening, and she just sat down next to him, put her arms around him, and took him away. But before she did, he said, I want you all to hate war. Know that war is nothing to be hated. Uh, that's the, and I want none of you ever, ever to go to war. So the, the hatred of war and the love of veterans, because I had family and friends and cherished um, um, people whom I cherished as a child who had served in the First World War and the Second World War and then in Korea. So loving veterans and hating war, to me, always went together. They, they weren't polarized. You believe far too many people around the world and, and Americans perhaps in particular, we're simply oblivious to what war really is, what it means, and to the sacrifices and the suffering of the warriors. This book and my decision to write about just war so as to, to undermine it and, and, and show that it does cloak the sufferings of our soldiers was provoked by the current crisis of the epidemic of, of military and veteran suicides, uh, as well as the great agony and pain that so many veterans who don't take their lives, but whose lives are, are shadowed and darkened and, wound and, and wounded, um, it was provoked by them and their stories. I've worked with veterans for years, uh, for many years now, and I've listened closely. There was a saying in the, during the Vietnam period that has endured, if you didn't go, you don't know. And that's, that's absolutely true. That experience is incommunicable. Um, but that is no excuse for not listening. And through listening, we can come to understand. It serves, it enlightens us and lessens the burden on, on veterans to tell their stories. And the stories I heard over and over and over again is that is those stories described the burden of the destruction, of witnessing, participating in the, the destruction and the killing that is, that is simply uh, what modern warfare, any warfare, but particularly I think modern warfare is about. And that what, for instance, one Marine captain I've come to know quite now, 
quite well who served in Iraq and Afghanistan said that, that war is, the killing he engaged in was necessary, but he said there's no connection between necessary or legitimate killing and the moral injury that it inflicts. He said that every, every act of killing is evil. Every act of killing kills something in the, in the killer. He said, I know that. I know that's the price I've had to pay to serve my country. I would continue to serve. I would go back and do what I did again, knowing, however, that I am paying a price in my humanity and in my soul for that engagement. But that is, is what is necessary, he said, but never right. It's never right to take a life. It's sometimes necessary. That distinction between something being right and something being necessary, something being moral and something being necessary, is one that I think is crucial and that I hoped to clarify in the book so that we would not, so that the, the moral wounds, the spiritual afflictions of our veterans, which is now recognized as the, um, the signature wound of recent wars and the major cause of, of, of self-destruction among veterans, um, that, that, um, that, that the confusion that, that, is, uh, that occurs for the ordinary citizen, the inability to understand how can there be moral injury when you have served your country, when you have followed orders, when you, when neither your, your, neither the citizenry, neither the government, nor most churches see what you have done as anything but exemplary, honorary, you know, and 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 uh, just and right. Professor Robert Mahar, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the work.